So we are now recording. So hi everybody. And then can um, we I scold had... can we scold Daniel for driving while conferencing? Well he's we don't know anymore. <laughs> 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 Um, so I had two things that I wanted to bring up. Um, one was I issued a pull request. Hmm. Um, to here, it was just to modify the first one, you know, to the new template. Cool. Um, and I'll just continue down this road. It was a, it's a little bit different. So I'll put it in the chat here and in the minutes. You will see. Where Where is the pull request? Where? I put it in the minutes. See it? <laughs> Uh, yes, but that is a terribly titled pull request. Well, I was like, I was like, was like was update, like... I was like, update code of conduct. I was like, yeah, that can't I... be what we're talking about. No, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I, can I lay the claim that it was like 520 my time <laughs> and I wanted to get one done? <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me, there, there, there was a little tricky thing here. Oh, oh, I see. The code of conduct. I thought you meant you were going to upload, update the template. You updated the, the template around the code of conduct metric. Yeah. Ah, I see. Okay. So because we also thing... yeah, go ahead. We also have a template file somewhere in the repo. Yeah, I think a few of the um, working groups have a template. I'll get I'll get that all squared away too. Okay. Okay, cool. I'll shut up. You, you talk about your... <laughs> well, so basically, if you take a look at the top, um, see where we're like under objectives? Mm -hmm. Where a lot of these objectives were particular to a type of person. Do you see what I'm saying? Like a grant or awards program, mm -hmm. a project. A and so I, I got rid of that text and I can mm -hmm. put it back. I don't know how... So the objective is knowing that a community takes DNA seriously, evaluating a community. So I, do, I try to write them more as objectives mm -hmm. that were broader than what was there. So I didn't lose any of the nature. I just decontextualized them. Mm -hmm. That's all. Everything that else looks okay. that looks good. So if you're okay with that, then somebody merged my awesomely named pull request and then and then I'll just continue through them because I think this is going to be a recurring issue yeah yeah probably um if you do update any of the ones that are released mm -hmm. this one is released does that does that impact anything no. So what's on the web page? Yeah. Is still it would still be the old template. And then Okay. The new release that would be with FOSDEM would be under this one. Okay. I couldn't remember if we were dynamically pulling anything in or linking to anything. No, Kevin, if you want to comment on that, go ahead. Uh what you said was absolutely correct. It does not affect anything. Okay, cool. I so. just wanted to I wanted to confirm that before I click merge. Yep. Um, okay, if nobody else has any issues with this, I'll just go ahead and merge it now. Yep. Again, just for the record, I never change any of the content. I did a little bit in this one just because I had to decontextualize a few things, but yeah. I don't change any of the work. I'm just getting it in a new template. No, that makes that makes total sense. Thank you. Okay. And by the way, going through this template with all the working groups, it's been uh, kind of ridiculously effective in terms of how this one template is now usable for common, this one template is usable for DNI. It's been really great, to be honest with you. I've run into no real problems. That's yeah. awesome, because I know it we've is. struggled with, with the templates a bit in the past, and so it's nice to yeah. have something that's consistent that is indeed 
working for yeah. everyone. Because until you actually start putting the stuff in the template, no. it, I, it's, <laughs> I, I haven't done I haven't done one for evolution yet. So that's my next. <laughs> that's yeah. my next one, and I hopefully it'll go fine. But yes, you're right. Until you start putting it into a template. So that yeah. was my one thing. So I'll can just I'm just going to continue cool. to do that. With the target of finishing all of these before the January first release. It's just kind of a slowly but surely kind of thing. Um, okay, and then um, my other thing. I just I wanted to bring this up to this group here. I'm I'm starting to explore um, a way of getting the DNI metrics into into practice. So one of my big one of my big issues just with chaos, not like a bad issue with chaos in general, is that if we're going to take the time to develop metrics, I want to make sure that they are used. And so I think with a lot of the metrics, it's pretty straightforward in the sense that they are deployed in Grimoire Lab or in Augur. So mm -hmm. because they pull from trace data, obviously DNI metrics are completely different in that regard. And so one of the things that we're putting together right now is kind of a proof of concept is a, a way to do DNI badging. Mm. So this would be badging based on um, uh, events and also badging based on projects. And so the way that the way that we first see it working is um, there's a does anybody know Arfon Smith? Arfon used to be the at GitHub, kind of helped run the open source stuff with Brandon Keepers years ago. Mm. And so he has a journal, what's called a journal of open source software. And basically, so Don, it'd be like, if you put together a piece of software and you want to get publishing credit for it, then you would submit it to the journal of open source software. So it's not an academic paper, but you, you want to get mm. credit for the work that you're doing. You would submit the, the, um, you would submit the piece of software to GitHub in the sense, like here's the link to the repository, and, you know, um, and the peer review process actually occurs on GitHub and occurs in the open. So I would be the AE essentially for your piece of open source software. I would say, Hey, I was looking at your repository. You don't have a code of conduct. Can you go do a code of conduct? Hey, I see that you submitted this. Can you, you don't have any tests. Can you make sure that you have tests on this software? You know, just, and you would say just can do and you'd go back and make the changes and then come back to the main peer review repository and then essentially get your paper published after a little bit of back and forth that's done in the open and so this is the way that i'm envisioning the the dni badging program to occur as well so don you would have an event i'll just keep picking on you you would have an event um, that you want to earn a dni badge for and they would be just the metrics that are in chaos right now. So they would be a, a family friendliness. They would be event code of conduct. And I kind of forget the third one that we have under events. And you would say, I'm doing all three of these things. And I would say, great, can you show me? <laughs> and we would <laughs> go through this process on GitHub and you would demonstrate that you have an event code of conduct. You would, oh, diversity access tickets. You would demonstrate how you are providing diversity access tickets, and you would demonstrate how you're being family friendly at your event. And you and I would go back and forth for a little while, saying, I, that's great, I see that you've done a great job, or I, your diversity access ticket link is not super clear as to how somebody would get those tickets. Um, and again, we do all of this in the open, and then once you, kind of hit the mark, like a peer review, I would say, great. And you get a, a, a badge, a DNI badge for your event. I don't know what people's thoughts are. If anybody has thoughts on this, kind of doing this independent of the chaos project at the moment, but I really want to build a prototype that would start putting these, some of the DNI metrics into practice. My concern with this right now, so I think it's a great idea longer yeah. term. Um, my concern with it right now is that we have picked a couple of metrics that were easy yep. to define, but not yep. necessarily the most important ones. So what mm -hmm. happens if, um, let's just say, you know, I have an event, I run yep. it through this, this process in the open and I get my, my DNI badge. Yep. Um, and then um, we add several new metrics that are for things that 
I don't have in my event sure. and I would no longer qualify for the badge based on the fact sure. that we, we yeah. now have some things that are maybe even more important than what I was granted the badge for doing. Yeah. And what would we do in those cases? Well, Cause, cause, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for you. Yeah. Cause the badging sounds great. Once we have a robust set of metrics released where, yep. um, where it's clear that like the metrics that we have for DNI and people meeting those, um, really does indeed um, kind of certify you for something. You could, you could uh, treat it the same way they, they treat certifications, right? Where you have to get recertified every year or two years. Yeah, for an event, it would, it, it'd be a one-time thing, yeah. the way that I would see it. A project certainly would have to be recertified um, every year, but it, yeah. I have a comment here. So, so I agree with Don. Um, it's hard, basically. I, well, the, the, the metrics we are releasing doesn't uh, don't mean that we are uh, releasing the most important ones. But it's true that at the same time, what if we try to focus only on one of the focus areas? So, so far, I'm thinking of hey, we can we, we can advocate for let's say six months or a year, a full year, might be something more appealing. Uh, we can advocate yep. as a community for having badges about your uh, event diversity. So, and then we can help each, each uh, let's say, each of the uh, conferences that approach us. They can ask for help, and then we can we can do this job, but only focusing on one of them, like you know, event diversity, which is kind of yep. easy for us to say. Uh, I don't know, spend like ten minutes reviewing a website and looking for. Diversity tickets and family friendly, uh, all of these things, and, that. Yep. and then we can give the badge. Yeah, and I think I'm probably starting with the, the Linux Foundation project. Yeah, it does. Sense. Sorry. It does make sense. So I think kind of hearing everybody's comments, um, good idea, <laughs> like reasonable idea, um, but maybe think about and then think about aiming at events first. Um, but then also to, I think this was Don's point, which is right now, I think we have three metrics that I don't, that um, define event diversity. And maybe that's not a super robust set of metrics and that may change over time where there may actually be six metrics that we want to, whatever it might be, but we might have six metrics that are necessary to get a gold badge or a silver badge or we don't even do colors, but how do we make sure we account for those changes? I think that's kind of your point, Don. Mm -hmm. uh, I think these are all good questions. I don't think any of these questions are gonna preclude me from moving forward on this. Mm -hmm. So I, I think maybe one of the first things that I can do is start working here to put together what the system would look like irrespective of what those metrics might be mm -hmm. just how the workflow would work um and then maybe we don't think about doing anything until like a year down the road until we have a slightly more robust set of metrics that we'd be comfortable with being part of that badging program yeah my cat bring this okay is that okay yeah okay. i've i have think i have most of this kind of in the in the notes um okay, oh, okay. Uh, so I have that um, I have the concerns that we had and then it probably makes sense to roll this out later and we would definitely need to recertify periodically and right now uh, it might make sense to focus on events and maybe we focus our second release on uh -huh. um, event metrics that would allow us to do something like this badging. Okay. Yeah, um, another, another comment. So perhaps in the workflow we can uh, we can help others uh, to add the specific missing information. For example, here, so if we go for the code of conduct, uh, we can link to a template that there are yes. some around. So same for, I know, even diversity tickets. So if you don't have them, uh, our proposal from Chaos is maybe you, you, you can have a look at this. I don't know, Linux yeah. Foundation, OSCON, or whatever. I, I think that's a great idea. Yes. Yeah, that's a great idea.
Yeah, the hope would be is that the review process is transparent and supportive <laughs> of people looking to to do this work. Yep. Okay, so I've added that to the notes that, okay. that we can include some templates and other information to help help these people get their events and projects to be more inclusive. My other, part another of thing process. that's on my mind, I think we'd have to recruit people if this actually comes to fruition mm -hmm. to help in this process because we can't <laughs> legitimately just keep asking us again. Yeah. We would have to ask folks who have an interest in DNI to participate as essentially associate editors or reviewers, you know, kind of under a <laughs> comparing it to a, a mm -hmm. traditional review model. Um, and probably if we start having some, let's say, customers as uh, Linux Foundation projects, yeah. this would be really helpful for uh, bringing other projects out of the Linux ecosystem somehow, so, or other conferences. I don't know, maybe, I don't see myself directly going to OSCON or all things open, but if we have a bunch of examples from the Linux Foundation, we can say, hey, this is how we are implementing this. Are you interested? What do you think? Yep. Yeah, the other thing we could do is we could work with a couple of the groups that have kind of, I'm thinking of DevOps days specifically, because they have kind of an overarching sort of uh, structure for DevOps days, but it's actually each DevOps days is organized by individual people. Um, mm -hmm. And the DNI stuff isn't particularly well uh, documented anywhere for like the DevOps stuff. So we could maybe work with something like DevOps Days organization to work with individual DevOps Days in individual locations. Are these like one day events? I'm not super familiar with them. Oh, sorry. So DevOps Days, um, they happen around the world. Um, I just helped organize the one for uh, London that was a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I used to organize Portland and they're generally, um, generally two day events. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain, there are certain structures, like in order to call it a DevOps days, there's a certain criteria that you have to meet. Um, mm -hmm. But it's pretty loose and it's pretty much about the format. So it has to have like some open spaces. It has to have, um, you're not allowed to share the attendee information with sponsors. There's like mm -hmm. a certain set of criteria, but the, the DNI stuff isn't particularly well, um, okay. well documented. Like the London team did a fantastic job of it. I could say not because I was involved, because there are other people that, that drove a lot of the DNI stuff. Okay. And so there's a, a larger DevOps yeah. group that kind of certifies these smaller events yep. to be able to occur. Okay. Yeah. And I could help with that. We, we wouldn't want to do it until after we got kind of our, our act together, I think, a little bit. Okay. I'll drop a link to DevOps, it's basically devopsdays.org. Okay. Well, I think um, in the interim, as, I think it's a great idea if we could focus some of the new metrics towards on Europe on events. That would be great. And then I can, like I said, work on the workflow just to give people a sense of what it would look like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and you could comment on, on all of that too. Okay. Um, and then I guess, well, the question we could cross later is, is if we actually do this, um, would we want to do like, uh, what CII does that you have levels of badging or that you are just badged or you are not badged, you know, like, Hey, you have a code of conduct, but nothing else you get a, <laughs> you get a low badge or you have everything you get a high badge. Just an open question that doesn't need to be answered now. Yeah. My, my, my inkling would be to start out with one and then see if we need more rather than okay. overcomplicate things and then realize that we one. didn't need it. Okay. So you're either badged or you're not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And but then, we don't we don't need to decide that yet. We can decide that. No, later. I totally. Yeah. It's just uh, these are things that have been crossing my mind as I've been thinking about this. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is just this. To me, this has to stay in the open. This has to be a transparent process. I think that would be one of the key important parts of this. That mm -hmm. it's not a self report. 
by anybody. <laughs> kind of yeah. like the CIA edging. <laughs> but it's done fully transparently and it's approved somewhere. So okay. Well, thank you very much for the feedback. That was great. Um, I have a small grant in here at the university with a student, with Matt, actually, to try to get this built so that we can take a look at it. Just kind of a prototype built. Cool. Okay. That was it for me. Do people have other things for the agenda to talk about? I do not. Not for my own. Yeah, not in my case. Oh. Well, the, only, the only thing is that I'll be out during the uh, next couple of weeks, just in case. So I, I won't be attending the meetings. I suspect most people won't be here next week. Is that right? Yeah, I won't be. I'll be at the Open Summer Summit in Leon. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and I think for me, I won't be here next Monday. In that, re I mean, well, we may want to not have the meeting next week. What do y'all think? Makes sense to me. Okay. Um, actually, the one other thing yeah. that I wanted to put here was that spreadsheet. So, the tracking spreadsheet, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be in the... I got it, yep. Oh, I thought it'd be in the previous notes, but it's not. For whatever reason, if you could drop it in the notes, that'd be great. There. Got it. So maybe this would also be just in terms of event diversity, something to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. You see there we have speaker demographics and attendee demographics. Do you see sorry, that? I'm still opening, I'm sorry, I'm still opening the spreadsheet. Okay. I was typing in the notes. Um, okay. The work groups are across the bottom. Mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, yeah. No, I do. Th I think that, yeah, speaker demographics and attendee demographics should be relatively, relatively straightforward. I think we have partial work done on both of those. I think so too. Obviously, if they're yellow, that did mean that something had been done. Yeah. Maybe I'll try to track those down too and see if I can't start kind of shaping them a little bit mm -hmm. and just kind of see what we have and bring those forward. Yeah. I was just going to look at the repo and see if we had what we had for those. I'm so wondering if it's like how to be attentive to speaker demographics and attendee demographics or how to report. Well, actually, the speaker demographics one is looking, there's, there's a bunch of stuff in there. I'm, I don't have time to evaluate how good it is. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing with attendee demographics. We've got, we've got a bunch of stuff there. I think, I think it's in a okay. process where it needs to be. Um, cleaned up and just just discussed. So maybe we could put that on the agenda for for the next yeah. meeting. Yeah, I was just documenting that we're going to cancel the um, October twenty eighth meeting okay. and do our next one on. How diverse are the attendees? Okay. So do you think? Um, does anybody have a thought? If I look at attendee demographics and a speaker demographics, are these about? This is mostly just to orient my own brain. Do you think these metrics are about how to encourage speaker demographics and attendee demographics? You know, kind of that pre, like what are we doing to, to make sure that these, these issues are addressed? Or 
are they kind of the post hoc stuff that says here's how we effectively report? There are, there are more of the post hoc stuff. So if you look, I'm just looking at the attendee one. Some of the what we have under success metrics are interviewing interviewing attendees to understand whether or not it met their diversity and inclusion expectations. Okay. Um, yeah. Using registration data and survey data to actually gather. Okay. Right. Gather the metrics. So it is. It is very much at least the attendee one is, and I'm pretty sure because I think I worked on the speaker one for a while, uh -huh. and so I same think thing. that it's it's kind of it's kind of the same. Yep. Interview. There's, there's a lot to think about um, when it comes to uh, speakers. So you know the fact that um, you know speakers have to be diverse when you group them in different ways. So like like you can't have all white men white you know cis men on on the keynote stage and have all of the diverse mm -hmm. participants in the diversity and inclusion track that's that's not a win mm -hmm. for a conference right so there's some extra <laughs> stuff you have to think about <laughs> um oh, when it comes to speaker. Good. and some of that is in there for objectives but i'm not sure that we've how how much is in there from a measurement standpoint Nope, oh, that's totally fair that helps so that's good. and i actually have to drop off because i have i have stand up and like two minutes so i have to okay uh thanks for the discussion everybody well not everybody has to leave i just have to leave well <laughs> okay so that's bye. i'll see if anybody else has anything see you later bye bye yeah if anybody has anything please bring it up but if not then we're done no not really. okay thanks matt okay thanks everybody have a day all right bye, -bye. bye.